Hello and welcome to another episode of VHS. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play positionally and not just think about material. This is aimed for around 600, no, or 500, 600 to around 800, 900, maybe even 1000. So, uh, an ideal 5 to 600 is someone who knows that they should be controlling the center, the central four squares, uh, the central four squares or the or this big rectangle. Or just these four. They know the, to bring the knights and bishops out. Um, they know how. They know about, for example, they will. They'll know how to bring the knights out. Like they will just bring every, all the knights out. Uh, not evil. <laughs> that's that's another tactic. Uh, um, something like this, and then uh, making sure that you can develop the other bishop and playing the same thing. They know about castling. And bringing the rook to the middle and more like that. That gets to about 900, but uh, usually 600. Understand the basic of controlling the center and getting uh, uh bring knights and bishops out. And usually they know castling as well and uh, connecting the rooks as well. Anyway, uh, but today, uh, but one thing they don't realize is. There are some players, uh, it might be you as well, but it's fine, this is why you've come on this video, so, um, there are some, uh, where, like, uh, some players who, like, will just play for material, and just for checks, attacks, and captures, and don't understand any much about positional, positional play. For example, uh, I've seen, I saw this game once, where, uh, I was playing as white, uh, and uh, the opponent played this, and uh, I attacked the queen normal. But instead of playing the the main line, I gave a check, and when I blocked with the queen, they actually took the queen. And then they were like, "Oh, I've brought my queen out, and I've given them some checks." They thought they were in an advantage because they've got two checks, but actually no. I've got two pieces out. I'm about to play d4. His uh, the king is a bit. It's just I'm up in development, even like this, it says so here. Anyway, so, and they would play like this and like, uh, no, they, 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 they would play like b6 and interesting uh, moves. But then obviously, I'm, I'm always just up ahead in, uh, I'm always ahead in development, so I can always just, sorry, that hangs upon. <laughs> N they'll go knight to f6 and like knight d7 long castle, but then I've just I, by the time they can do that, for example, d4 knight knight d7, and then they start castling. I've already got my rooks to the center. I'm about to launch an attack on the king. Obviously, there aren't queens on the board, but I can always just keep create weaknesses, and I'm just quicker. Like uh. There are only two moves by black which actually keep the game okay, so it's e6 and h6. Everything else uh, means it's plus one. Almost. Anyway. And another example is, um, uh, I've I played against uh, another person, and lots of people actually, against things like the Queen's Gambit, which is like a highly theoretical opening. Was this one minute? Sorry. Uh... It is Stockfish 15, never mind. Um, there'll be, um, people will just accept the Queen's Gambit, and they don't really know much theory about the thing, about, bleh, about it. And then, and then when you play E4, the, some people will just go B5. And B5 isn't one of the great, isn't a great move. And sometimes if you play the old variation, then B5, A4, C6, and then you go takes and takes, and then you've, the rook's trapped. And that's what the position becomes, and then this just falls apart, and, and even if you just played, uh, like this, and, and, the, and, oh, oh, sorry, uh, and they've still got the central pawn, um, you can just go knight a3, and you're attacking both pawns, and if they go b4, you just win a pawn. And this pawn is going to be one as well, and you'll be up a pawn with two pawns in the center, up in development, and it's just a great position. So, in the opening, it's not just about material, it's also, uh, and then there's like another example, which is the, 
the Staunton Gambit, which isn't a great opening. So, you can actually play Queen H5 check, G6, and then you can go Bishop E2. This is a bit, it's a bit interesting, it's a really weird one, but anyway. Uh, it's basically, people will be like, oh, free queen. But, in the end, it's not about material, it's actually about uh, who wins the game. So if you're down, I don't know, if you're down all these, like, you're down the entire back rank and you've just got two pawns, but you checkmate the opponent's king, you still won the game. They don't win the game for material. I think I've played someone who said they, um, uh, if we couldn't finish the game, they would, they would say, uh, mm, let's, uh, see, uh, whoever's got more material wins the game, which is actually not the best thinking. Anyway. So in the opening, uh, you should just you shouldn't be just thinking about uh, you, the material. Uh, for example, I'll show you an, uh, one more example. So d4 here. If someone plays c5 against you, uh, I'm gonna turn off the lines. Uh, I'm the I'm the evil. <laughs> mm. And uh, white as white, you go, ooh, it's a free pawn, and you take it. Actually, uh, if you noticed, it was plus one before this. Oh, let me just go back with C5. Okay. C5. It's plus 1.02. And by taking it, you lose 0.7% of the advantage. Uh, because the posi positionally, it's not very good. In the opening, you should try and be controlling the center. And flank pawn, like... Flank pawns like these are just to distract you. You should be playing d5 and gain space. And then if they go knight to f6, you can you can come here. Yes, and uh, anyway, that's the Benoni. <laughs> I could do an openings video, but anyway. Uh, yeah. What else? Uh. Um, I'll try and show an example, maybe. Yeah, mm. so if it's d4, d5. No, no, I mean, uh, the way I showed you this one, uh, you should just go d5. But, um, for example, if they play like this, and you should never be like a... At the opening, you shouldn't really be trying to weaken the king either. It doesn't really tie in with what I'm talking about, but anyway. Uh... No, oh, one minute. Uh, I'm just gonna think about how to get the positional thought into the head. Uh, so positionally, it's just like uh, yeah, position. For example, I'll I'll just quickly show something. So uh, this is like an example I've got from my book, which is How to Reassess Your Chess Fourth Edition by Jeremy Silverman. Highly recommend the book, it's very nice. Uh, okay, this is the Scandinavian, and people usually take back with the queen. But there's actually a very interesting version, where where black will just uh, sacrifice a pawn completely. Um, and they, if they go just c4, you can just go, uh, you can do the Scandinavian gambit. And uh, you'll, uh, even though you're down a pawn, you've got firm, con uh, like, if they go, uh, what was it? Uh, was just one minute. I'm just thinking about this position. Uh, already you can see white is up a pawn. But black is actually slightly, slightly better. So that's the thing. And if you're playing as white, for example, if you're like, Oh yes, I'm up a pawn, victory shall be mine. And you just go like, knight c3 or something. Well, knight c3 is the best move, but uh, let's say you go like a... Mm. One thing is just like a, if you go like knight f3, you've just got like was it e5, and look at look at the position. It's like it's become like a reverse Sicilian. A reverse Sicilian is like a, a e4 and a minute. Where was I again? Okay, yeah. So the reverse Sicilian is like the Sicilian, like e4 c5, except it's reversed. So actually, uh, black is literally better now. Down upon black's better, so yeah. I'll just I don't know how else I can 
show this. It's quite a difficult con concept to understand, uh, but if you can understand the concept, you will definitely get off beginner level and you will start coming to like 900, 1000, 1100, 1200. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, and also I'll just quickly show one more example. Uh, what was it? Uh, okay, the Italian game. You should you shouldn't really be afraid in this position to play mm, like uh, the Evans Gambit. People um, like as black. If you if you are just thinking about material, you will be like Bishop takes b4. Let's go go back one minute. Oops, never mind. Yeah, Knight takes b4. And you'll be like, oh yes, a pawn. Yeah, let's go. Uh, but the problem is. Sometimes you can sacrifice pawns, like you can gambit pawns, and then and then the people can just play like really actively. You you can sometimes just cut uh sacrifice like pawns. You can be down two pawns, but the king just cannot castle because every like all the pieces are just going to be flowing out, and pieces are just crap. For example, if you go knight f6, you just get kicked with e5. Then after d5 you can go, uh, what was it? He takes f6, yeah. And then when you go d takes c4 you can go f takes g7, takes, takes. Blacks up a pawn, but, and they're gonna win back the pawn here. But, uh, what was it? And I d5 and you've just got lots of targets. Ignore that. I've never made an arrow before. <laughs> you see, and you've just got lots of targets and, like, bishop e6. And it's just like, I think, hmm, just think, actually you can't stop, there's actually two threats which you cannot stop, yeah, which is why it's so good for white, white's down a pawn, but they've got such good positional, so, well, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, I've tried to cover as many examples as I could think of, off the top of my head, anyway, uh, yeah, subscribe if you enjoy, because, I've got like I'm thinking of some interesting like uh, openings and st openings videos like the Benoni and stuff. Anyway, VHS out.